Good evening, everyone. This is Robert. RJL Network proudly presents another exciting edition of Inside Pitch. The 1961 World Series is on the air. We are at Milwaukee County Stadium. This is game four of the World Series between the Detroit Tigers and the Milwaukee Braves. The Braves lead this series two games to one. The Tigers were able to get a win yesterday. So far, the road team has won every single game of this series. It kind of brings back a little bit of a memory. Remember at the start of the 1961 season, the home team couldn't win, it couldn't lose a game. And now here at the end of the 61 season, it's the home team that can't win a game. It's kind of strange how that's going on here, isn't it? So we are now going into game four of this exciting World Series. Will the Tigers tie this series up, guaranteeing a return trip to Tiger Stadium? Or the Braves take a 3-1 series lead and have Warren Spahn try to close the series out tomorrow night? Anything is possible on Inside Pitch. Jack Dawson and Brian B. are first to join us here at County Stadium. So we are all set and ready to go. Tigers got a win yesterday. Can they do it again? Braves, can they force elimination tomorrow night? We will find out. We'll have to see what Inside Pitch has to say. Starting pitcher for the Milwaukee Braves, their number four starter, Bob Buell. He has a record of two wins and no losses for the postseason. So he has not tasted defeat yet in the, uh, in the playoffs. I'm pretty sure Chuck Rawlings will join us momentarily for this big game. He is our Tiger fan, uh, the main Tiger fan. So let's get set and ready to go. We got more exciting baseball coming up, and we will see what the Tigers will be. Let's go to the top of the first. Leading off of the Tigers, second baseman, Jake Wood. Uh, he's gotten his average up a little bit. His average is now at 232 for the postseason, and he does have a home run. Were you using gray, white, and gray dice? Braves are the home team. The fans here at County Stadium did not like last night, but they will forgive their team if they can win tonight. Game four of this World Series. Will we have a tie series, or will we be facing elimination? Let's see what Inside Pitch has to say. Buell, 4-3, range play at the park. County Stadium, 3-3, at the ground ball to short. That ball is hit to McMillan. His range is a three. That is a one. He will get take care of it and throw to first for the out. One down, and that will bring up the center fielder, Bill Bruton, struggling in this postseason, batting 164, but he does have three home runs. Buell will go ahead and pitch. 1-5, range play again. Bruton, 4-1, ground ball, second base, hit the bowling. His range is a four. That is a five. It'll get past him for a base hit. Bruton gets the first hit of the game. He will head to first. And now we will see right fielder Mr. Tiger, Al Kaline, one of the greatest of all time, struggling though this postseason, batting 222, still looking for his first homer of the of the uh, playoffs. Strategy roll. Now, that is a three. Bruton actually gets the steal sign. 16 minus two is 14. Tory minus two is 12. I'm not going to send him. I'm going to let K-Line swing. Buell, one, four. Home run chance. Righty, zero. Not happening. K-Line, a three, five. Instead, he hits a fly ball deep to center. But some bum by the name of Hank is going to get there and make the catch for out number two. Pretty much gets it at the track. Here comes the left fielder, Rocky Colavito, batting 240 for the postseason, and he does have three home runs. That is a one. Bruton, again, will not try to steal. He will stay put. Buell with the pitch. One-two against the righty. Blank. 
Colavito, 1-4. That's a fly ball to center again. And once again, some guy named Hank will make the catch and end the inning. No runs and a hit. We go to the bottom of the first. Starting pitcher for the Detroit Tigers, their number four starter, Paul Foytak. He has a record of one and zero for the postseason, as he did win his, as he did get his victory against the Orioles in Game Four of the ALCS. But now the Braves will come to the plate, and let's see what we got in the bottom of the first. Leading off for the Braves, right fielder Lee May. He's having an excellent postseason, batting 375. Foytak will make the pitch. Foytak, 5-4. That's at the park. County Stadium, 1-1. Popped up right up the chimney. That's a pop fly behind the plate. And it's going to be Brown to make the play. And that is the first out. So we'll pop out to the catcher. Handled easily by Dick Brown. One down. That'll bring up the second baseman, Frank Bowling, batting 191 in the postseason. He does have a home run. Foytak will make the pitch. Foytak, 4-4. That's going to be an out. And it will be a ground ball to short, handled easily by Fernandez. Two down as there is Chuck Rawlings joining us here at County Stadium. I believe, uh, I believe he is rooting for the Braves tonight, though. Next batter is the third baseman, Hall of Famer, Eddie Matthews. Hall of Fame, um, MVP candidate, batting 321 with two homers. Foytak will go ahead and pitch. Foytak, 3-3, three, three, hit by pitch. The seven is high. Matthews, 3-6, and against the righty, he smacks one into center field. And that's going to be a double. Matthews is going to drop in, going to slide into second with a two-out, two-bagger, and that keeps the inning alive. Here comes the center fielder, one of the greatest of all time, the hammer, Hank Aaron. Uh, he's batting 354, and he does have a home run. He is an MVP candidate. Strategy roll, nothing on the 17. Matthews will stay at second. Foytak with the pitch. 2-3. That is a blank. Aaron. 2-1. That's a power hit to left field. That's a 13. And against the righty, Aaron's going to put the Braves on the board first. And that's going to be a double to left. Aaron will slide into second base. And just like that, the Braves are up 1-0. So Aaron comes through with an RBI double as the Braves take a quick lead. Here comes the first baseman, Joe Adcock. Definitely an MVP candidate, batting 333, and he has three home runs in this postseason. Aaron on at second. Strategy roll, nothing on the 14. Foytak will go ahead and pitch. Foytak, 4-1, walk, three, and that will be ball four. Adcock trots to first. County Stadium only subtracts two to one, two to strikeouts. And now runners at first and second. Here comes the left fielder, Frank Thomas. He's batting 250 for the postseason, and he does have a home run. Yes, the Braves scored first, but the Tigers were able to win it last night anyway. The Braves scored first last night as well. Strategy, nothing on the four. Aaron will stay put. Foytak sets up with the pitch. Foytak, 4-4. Four, four. That's going to be an out. And it's a grounder to short. Handled easily by Fernandez. And he's going to throw to second to get Adcock. And that will retire the side. One run on two hits for the Braves. They have a quick 1-0 lead here after one. But we already know that no lead is safe on inside pitch. And that's what makes this game so great. Where other games, if a team takes the lead, I really rarely ever see the other team come back and win it in other gaming engines. We go to the top of the second. Leading off for the Tigers, first baseman, Norm Cash. He is batting 419 
for the postseason, and he has four home runs. Definitely an MVP candidate for the Tigers. Top of the second, one nothing. Buell, 2-2, two -two against the lefty. Super walk that 17 to walk him, and Cash gets the first. So that is the first walk issued by Buell. He had 94 of them in 61. He actually had more walks than strikeouts. Here comes the third baseman, Steve Boros. Also pretty close to an MVP candidate. He is batting 295 for the postseason. He does have a home run. Infield a double play. Strat, 13, nothing happening. Buell will make the pitch. Buell, 4-3, range play at the park, County Stadium, 4-2, and that is a grounder to second base, that ball is at the bowling, at double play depth, his range is a 3, and he's got it, nice play by bowling, 2-2-3, two, two, shortstop McMillan, plus 1 is a 4, and he got the double play, 2 outs, what a play by bowling. A 4-6-3 double play at infield depth. And Bowling makes a heck of a double play uh, roll there. And it's two outs. That'll bring up the catcher, Dick Brown. He's batting 245. And he does have a home run. So Brown is now getting close to his average. Brown got out to a slow start, but he's now getting there. Buell with the pitch. 2-5, super walk, and that will be ball four, so Brown will walk. Second walk issued by Buell. And now we'll see the shortstop, Chico Fernandez, and he's batting 204 for the postseason under his average. He missed a couple of home runs last night, though. Brown on it first. Strategy, that is a 20. Buell throws to first. Does not get him. Brown gets back. Buell will now pitch to Fernandez. 4-4 four, four against the righty. That is a blank. Fernandez, 1-4. It's a fly ball to left. And Thomas will come in a little bit. And he will put it away. Nothing across except a couple of walks and a big-time double play. We go to the bottom of the second. Voitak gets back on the mound. Leading off for the Bravos will be the catcher, Joe Torrey. He is batting 244 with a home run in the postseason. one nothing Braves. Foytak, 6-1. Possible error. Torrey, 6-6. That's a base hit to left field. A single. Colavito's error rating is a 6. That's a 12. He won't make an error. He'll take care of it and get it into the infield. A leadoff single for Torrey. Coming up next is the shortstop, Roy McMillan, batting also 244 for the postseason with a home run. He is hitting above his average. Infield a double play. Strat, 12. Torrey stays put. Foytak will make the pitch. Foytak, 1 6, walk, 15. Yes, that is ball four. And now the Braves are threatening. He walks McMillan. And now runners at first and second. And that will bring up the pitcher, Bob Buell. He batted 067 as a hitter in 61 with two RBIs. He is going to swing away. Infield is at double play depth. Strategy, that is a nine. Nothing happening. I'm not going to let Buell um, bunt here, try to bunt, although a bunt actually makes sense. Uh, bunt rating is three. Mm. Mm. You know what? A bunt might be the best thing to do. Keep him out of the double play. Buell's going to bunt. Infield will move into corners in expecting it. Boytak. 2-2. Two -two. Range play. Oh, boy. And that's interesting on a range play. So here comes the bunt attempt. And that is a 3 and a 10. So the bunt is done here, so it's a three. So it's bunted back to first base. It's bunted back to first base. The bunt rating is a three, but at the corner's in, his bunt rating becomes a two. That is a 10, and that is a successful sacrifice bunt if bunting, a successful sacrifice bunt. But 
It's a range play. And the, it's hit the first base, and his range is a three. But on a range play on a bunt, you add two, so his range is a five. It is a six. He can't get it. He can't get it. Cash can't get the bunt, and everybody's going to be safe. Holy cow, a six is the only thing that Cash couldn't get. And that is a bunt. That is a hit. And the bases are loaded with no one out. Oh, even with the range at a even with the range at a five, it wouldn't have mattered. With his range plus two in on a five, and he doesn't get it. And now the bases are loaded with no one out, and here's May. Infield is going to play in. May does not ground it a much double play, so they're going to make a play at the plate here. And what a bunt there by Buell as that goes for a hit. Now the strategy roll back on. That is a seven and nothing happening. Foytak will make the pitch. Foytak, 3-2. Against the lefty, walk plus. And that, tail, that 12 will walk him. And the, and the Tigers walk in a run. Stadium cheers. Yay! And it is now 2 nothing. A walk to May. And the runners will advance one base. And now the batter is bowling. They're going to go talk to Foytak on the mound. Foytak a little bit miffed that a play on the bunt couldn't have been made. And now it is 2 nothing. Braves. Infield still playing. Now the infield is going to play a double play depth. Since bowling does ground out in the double plays and just try to turn two outs. Strategy roll. That is a 15. Nothing happening. Foytak will go. Actually, they're going to keep it in. I'm sorry. Keep the infield in. You can't allow any runs here. You're already down to nothing. Foytak will go ahead and pitch. Foytak, 4-2. Strikeout, 6. No, it's too high. Bowling. A 1-1. One, one. It's a grounder to second base. 3 with the infield in, the only thing you do is three and the and the and four tax zero here. So the, it's a double it's a double play if it's a one or at one to three. It's a ground and a second. It is a five. So the throw goes to the plate, and they get McMillan. He is out, but the runners will advance. They do not get the double play as bowling will get to first, but there is one out. So that goes as a fielder's choice. And the runners move up, and now the batter is Matthews, but there is one out. DBIP joins us here at County Stadium. So now the bases are still loaded, but now there is one out, with the Braves having a 2-0 lead now. The infield will still remain in. Matthews. There's the batter. He is one for one. He's got a double. Strategy roll. Nothing on the three. Buell will stay put. Foytak trying to get out of this jam. Already two nothing Braves. Foytak with the pitch. Three, two. Against the lefty. That's another walk and another run. Super walk. And now it is three nothing Braves. Stadium cheers. Yay! Third, fourth walk given up by Foytak. And now a 3 nothing Braves lead. And here comes that guy. The hammer is one for one with a double. And I don't know how much longer I can keep Foytak out there giving up these runs, giving up these walks. Yeah, let me check his pull rating. I'm going to see here. Two, three, four, five, six. Wait, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One more walk or run, he's out of there. I'm going to go by the pull rating in this case. So the bases are loaded, and Chuck Rawlings not enjoying what he's seeing so far. Bases are loaded here, one out, bottom of the second, 3 nothing Braves. The infield is still going to play in. Foytak will set up, strategy roll. That is a six, no play. 
Floyd Tack will now deal with the hammer. And here comes the pitch. 6-4, strikeout 15. That is high. Aaron, 1-1. One, one. It's a ground ball to short. Now, Aaron has a double play rating of a 2. So a 1 and 0 from Floyd Tack. A 1-2, to two, it's a... It is a 6-2-3 double play. It is a three, so it is not a double play. So May's base running rating is a two with the infield in. He is thrown out at the plate, and the runners will advance, and there are now two outs. So now two down on another fielder's choice. And now the batter is Adcock with the bases still loaded, but now two down. So now Foytak, if he could just get out of this, we're only giving up the two runs. The Tigers do have a very potent lineup, but the bases are still loaded here. Adcock has walked his first time up. Foytak will have to pitch to him. Fans hoping for a hit. Strategy roll. Nothing on the 10. Bowling at third. Matthews at second. Aaron at first. Foytak will make the pitch. 4-5. Home run chance. Righty. Righty. 1-7. 4 is good. And against the righty, Adcock has a 20. Kablam! That ball is hit pretty high. That ball is hit pretty deep. And that ball is hit pretty gone. Grand slam home run, Joe Adcock. Stadium cheers. Yay! A 4-5 is a home run chance. Righty 1-7. And that is a four, and Adcock has 20s against righties, and Stadium just explodes. Seven nothing Braves on a big blast by Joe Adcock. Kablam Grand Slam. Tiger fans, barf. Blech. Seven nothing Braves here in the bottom of the second, and that is all for Foytak as he is coming out of here. D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer, joins us here at County Stadium, as well as Richard R. And that's going to be it for Foytak as that is it for him. And I think the play of the game so far was the misplay, was the unable to get the bunt, and the. And definitely the Tigers are going to have to go to the bullpen. And they got a, the pitcher is due to lead off, but I don't do – Um, I'm just going to go ahead and bring out this guy. Coming on to pitch for the Tigers will be Manny Montijo. No wins, no losses, no saves. A 3-9-4 ERA. Does he have any record? He is 1-0, actually, for the postseason, so not bad. So Montino will come on here and pitch for the Tigers. Now a 7-0 lead for the Braves. Frank Thomas is the batter here. And he is 0-for-1. Still two outs, bottom of the second inning. Braves up 7-0 here. Montijo with the pitch. 6-3, strikeout three. Swing and a miss. Steer right out. And the inning is over. But nine men come up to the plate. Six runs on three hits, three walks, and a, and a grand slam home run by Joe Adcock. That's his fourth home run of the postseason. And the Braves have a 7 nothing lead here after two. But remember, no lead is safe on inside pitch. Just ask the Yankee. Just ask the Brewers. Just ask the Indians, the Twins. Just ask a lot of teams. We go to the top of the third. Braves now with a 7-0 lead here. 
And we're going to see a pinch hitter for Manny Monti. Or actually, will we? Or do I need to get some innings? Uh, no, he's going to pinch it. So Manny Montillo was the batter to lead off. And he looks like the Tigers will have to go to the bench early. Coming on to pitch for the bat, to bat for the Tigers will be pinch hitter Vic Wirtz. 260 average, 11 homers, 61 RBIs. Wirtz played with the Boston Red Sox most of 61. Wound up on the Tigers very late, but had enough at-bats for me to put him on the playoff roster. 7-0 Braves. Buell with the pitch. 5-6 against the lefty. That is a plank. Wirtz, 6-1. Fly to right. And May is going to get to that and make the play. One down, and here comes Wood. Wood is 0 for 1. Buell will go ahead and make the pitch. Buell, 5-1, strikeout 4, steer, right out, and he gets Wood. And that is the first strikeout for Buell. He had 77 of them in 61, and now there are two outs. Here comes Bruton. Bruton is one for one with a base hit. Buell will go ahead and make the pitch. Buell, 5-6 against the lefty. That is a blank. Bruton, 3-6 against the righty. That's a single right past third base. And Bruton, that's his second hit of the game for the Cats. But the Cats down 7 nothing. know that every base runner has got to be important. Here comes Mr. Tiger. K-line is 0 for 1. Strategy rolls are still active. Nothing on the 6. Bruton will stay at first. Buell will now pitch to K-line. Fans here at County Stadium now enjoying a 7-0 lead. But how long can that last? Buell, 1-5, range play. K-line. 6-2. It's a ground ball to first. That ball is hit to Adcock. Infield is back. His range is a three. That is a three. He takes it himself. Buell coming over, and Adcock decides to toss it to Buell, and Buell will get there and retire the side. No runs and a hit for the Cats as we go to the bottom of the third now. Richard R., I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is the first time you're in my chat, Richard R. I would like, if it is, I would like to uh, welcome you, sir. As I do welcome, as I like to welcome all my first-timers. If I think, I don't remember if you've ever been in the chat before. Bottom of the third, 7 nothing in favor of the Braves here. Joe Torrey is the batter. And he's one for one with a single. He started that inning. Tigers need a pitcher, and they need a pitcher to give them some innings here. And they're going to go with Ron Klein. Eight wins, nine losses, save, a 4-1-3 ERA. Klein does not have a record in the postseason. Ron Klein was with the Los Angeles Angels most of 61, wound up on the Tigers later. So Ron Klein will try to get some innings for them in here in the bottom of the third. Yes, first time. Well, good to have you here, Mr. Richard. Klein will go ahead and pitch. Klein, 5-5. Five, five. That is a blank. Torrey, 4-2. That's a power hit to right. That's a nine. And against the righty, that's going to be a leadoff triple for Torrey. So Torrey leads off the inning with a triple. And already the Braves have another run at third base. And it looks like Tiger pitching doesn't have it tonight. Here comes McMillan. He walked his first time up. Infield is going to play in. Tigers cannot allow any more runs. Torrey on at third. Klein will set up with the pitch. Strategy rolls are still active. That is an 18. Uh, McMillan is, ooh, squeeze bunt? Nah. Klein will go ahead and pitch. Klein, 6-3. And that's a wild pitch. That nine is a wild pitch. And Torrey will come in to score. Stadium cheers. Yay. A wild pitch by Klein gives the Braves another run. I'm hungry because I've ate nothing. And the fans here at County Stadium 
are right now beginning to think that tomorrow night could be a clincher, but we don't know that yet. Klein will pitch to McMillan. Still got a lot of baseball left here tonight. Infield will now move back. Klein with the pitch. 3-1. That is a plank. He's not tired. McMillan, 1-3. Ground ball to short. That'll get handled by Fernandez. One down, and here comes Buell. Buell got a base hit his first time up. It was a bunt attempt, but Cash could not get the range play at first. Klein, 6-4. Error on a throw. Buell, 6-6. Six, six. That's a fly to center. There won't be an error. And Bruton will get to it and put it away. Two down. As Chuck Rawlings right now is not liking the game at all. Here is May. May is 0 for 1 with a walk. Klein will set up with the pitch. Klein, 1-1, one, one, strikeout, 13. That is high. May, 1-4, ground ball to third, handled by Boros. And he will take his time and toss it and retire the side. One run, one hit, and a wild pitch, which scores a run. Braves up 8-0 here after three. Top of the fourth. Buell gets back on the mound. Rocky Colavito leads off. He's 0 for 1. Buell is 2 and 0 for this postseason. He has done very well for the Braves in the uh, playoffs. 8 0 Braves. Buell with the pitch. Buell, 3 1. That is a blank. Colavito, 1 3. A fly ball hit the left. And it will be Thomas making the play for the out. One down. Here comes Cash. Cash walked his first time up. Buell, 5-2. Wild pitch, ball one. Buell will try it again. 4-1. Strikeout, 18. That is high. Cash, 5-4. He has a power hit to left. That's an eight. And against the righty, Cash will have a double. Cash continues to hit beautifully in this postseason. And Cash will get a one-out double and stay at second base. Tigers way behind. Every, run, every base runner counts. And here comes Boros. Boros is 0 for 1. Infield is back. Strategy rolls are now off. So now it's just pitcher versus batter. Buell will pitch to Boros. Buell, 6-2. That's at the park. County Stadium, 3-1. It's a fly ball to right. And May's going to get to it and put it away. Two down. Two outs, and here comes Brown. Brown walked his first time up. Still now two outs here in the top of the fourth. Cash on at second. Buell will now set up with Brown. Buell. 5-3, that is a blank. Brown, 3-5, ground ball to third, handled by Matthews, and he's going to throw to first and get the out. Side retired. No runs and a hit for the Tigers. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Ron Klein will stay on the mound. He is due to bat second in the fifth inning. Frank Bowling leads off for the Braves, and he is 0 for 2. Steeler fan joins us here at County Stadium. So bottom of the fourth inning, 8-0 in favor of the Braves. Klein with the pitch. 6-6. Six, six. Home run result. Bowling against the righty needs a 6. The 16 is high. Bowling, 6-3, but he does slap one past the pitcher. That's a base hit. So Bowling doesn't get a homer, but he does hit it right past Klein. And a leadoff single for Bowling as the Braves come out hitting tonight. They only got one run last night, and they're trying to make up for it tonight to make sure they can set up a, a clinching game tomorrow night. Here's Matthews. Matthews is one for one, a double and a walk, and has scored twice. 
Infield double play. Steeler fan, I hope your Astros have a better game tonight. Bowling on at first. Strategy rolls are off. Klein with the pitch. 4-4. Range play at the park. County Stadium. 4-2. That's a ground ball to second base. The ball is hit to Wood. Double play depth. His range is a 2. He can't get it. Base hit. Bowling. Base runner 3 on a single pass second. That'll be good enough. He'll make third. So Bowling goes to third. Matthews on it first. And the Braves right now trying to put a hurt on the Tigers. And here comes that guy. Aaron is one for two, a double, and a scored once. A grand slam home run by Joe Adcock. His fourth home run of the postseason. May have probably solidified his MVP award, but we still got a couple more play here yet. Bowling on at third. Matthews on at first. The infield is going to play in. Detroit does not want any more runs. Strategy rolls are off. Klein will pitch. Klein, 6-3. Wild pitch. Five to the backstop. And a run will score. Bowling comes in to score. Matthews to second. 9 nothing Braves. Stadium cheers. Yay. A wild pitch thrown by Klein. And now a runner at second base. And the Braves are trying to make a statement tonight. And now the infield will be back. Matthews on at second. Still nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. Looks like this game is getting away from the Tigers. Klein is going to stay out there. Klein with the pitch. Klein, 4-3, that is a blank. Aaron, 5-5, five, five. and against the righty, it's a grounder to short. It'll get taken care of by Fernandez. The throw goes to first. Matthews will go to third. So Aaron is out at first. There's one out. Matthews goes to third base on a ground ball to short. Here comes Adcock, and he gets a big ovation from the Milwaukee crowd. Adcock, one for one with a bomb, a, a grand slam his last time up. Nine nothing in favor of the Braves. And Klein will pitch to Adcock here. Infield is going to play in. Klein will go ahead and pitch. Klein, 4-4. Four, four. Range play at the park. County Stadium, 5-2. It's a ground ball to third. The range, the third baseman is Boros. His range is a two. But the infield is in, which means it's a minus two, which means his range is a zero. That's a base hit. And it's going to be a double for Joe Adcock right down the line. Matthews comes in to score, and it is now 10 to nothing in favor of the Braves. Stadium cheers. Yay! A double for Radcock as he just continues to own this postseason right now. And now a 10-0 Braves lead with Adcock on at second with the double. Here comes Thomas. And I really want Klein to finish this inning, but he may not be able to. He's got uh, two more batters before he tires. Klein is going to pitch to Thomas. 10-0 in favor of the Braves. Tigers are already looking at game five. Klein with the pitch. 2-5. Strikeout seven. And he got Thomas. Struck him out. Thomas is now 0-3 for 3 with a second strikeout. And here comes Torrey. Torrey two for two, a single and a triple. Now two outs. Klein will go ahead and make the pitch. Klein, 3-1. That's a blank. He's not tired. Torrey, 1-2, popped up to third. And getting over there this time will be Burroughs. And he will make the catch and retire the side. Two runs 
on three hits and a wild pitch. The Braves have a 10-0 lead here after four. Can we just mercy rule this? Uh, no. Mercy rule? There's no mercy rule in baseball. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Braves leading 10 0. And I didn't expect a game like this tonight, though. Buell leading off. Buell the pitcher. Chico Fernandez leads off for the Cats. He's 0 for 1. Top of the fifth, 10 0 here. Buell will make the pitch. Buell, 3 1. That is a blank. Fernandez. 3-5. That's a power hit to right field. That's a 6. And that's going to be a double against a right-handed pitcher. So Fernandez finally gets a big-time hit. And he'll hold at second base. A double for Fernandez. We'll see a pinch hitter for Klein. And we'll see who the Tigers want to bring out. And let's see what they're going to have here. And coming on to pinch hit for the Tigers will be Dick McAuliffe. 256 average, six homers, 33 RBIs. McAuliffe will come on and pinch hit. Fernandez on its second, nobody out, top of the fifth. We'll see if the Tigers can get some runs. Buell with the pitch. 3-5, hit by pitch. The 14 is high. McAuliffe. 3-2, and that's a base hit right past short. It's a single, and Fernandez will score. Fernandez comes around. He will score. McAuliffe gets himself an RBI single. Tigers are on the board. It's 10-1. As Steeler fan again trying to call my mom, but uh, I don't know why he would want to talk to my mother. But that is a single, and the Tigers are finally on the board. Now a 10 to 1 game. And the batter now is Wood. Wood is 0 for 2. 10 to 1. Infield a double play. McAuliffe on it first. No strat. Buell will go ahead and pitch to Wood. Buell. 5 2. Wild pitch. Yes, that's a 2. And McAuliffe will go to second. So Buell uncorks a wild one, puts another run in scoring position, and that takes away the double play. So McCullough now with second base, and Buell will now pitch to Wood. Fans here at County Stadium enjoying a 10-1 lead, but they do know this is inside pitch. There's no guarantee. Buell, 4-3, range play at the park. County Stadium, 3-5, ground ball to second. The ball is at the bowling. His range is a four. That is a five. It'll get past him. Base hit for Wood. McCullough, a base runner three. He will come around and he will score. It's 10 to two. So an RBI single by Wood now makes it a 10 to two ball game. Long way to go yet. But that's a big-time hit for Wood, trying to get the Tigers back into this. Here comes Bruton. Bruton is two for two with two singles. Just trying to ask her what it's like to see her baseball team. You know, Steeler, I wonder about you sometimes, Matt. Dwayne Marks joins us here at County Stadium. Infield is now a double play once again. Now it's a 10-2 ball game. Buell staying on the mound. Wood on it first. Buell with the pitch. 4-3. Range play at the park. County Stadium. 6-6. Six, six. It's a ground ball to short. That ball is hit to McMillan. At double play depth, his range is a two. Not base hit for, it. for Bruton. It's a single. Wood, a base runner four. It will not be enough to get him to third. He will hold at second base. The Tigers are trying to make a rally here. Four, 
Fourth straight base hit by the Tigers. And now the batter is K-Line. K-Line is 0 for 2. Yeah, I wonder about you too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> infield run. Infield still a double play. Runners at first and second. Nobody out top of the fifth. Tigers already have two runs in. Buell will go ahead and pitch to K-Line. He is 0 for 2. Fans here at County Stadium getting a little antsy, but not worried yet. Buell will go ahead and make the pitch. Buell, 6-5 against the righty. Strikeout, 17 is high. K-Line, 5-1. And K-Line unloads on this one. And that's going to be a double in the center field. What comes into score? Bruton, base runner four, double the center zero, one to four, he scores. He does. K line stops at second. Two more runs coming for Detroit. It's 10 to four. And now they're going to go talk to. To Buell on the mound and see what's going on here. As Buell has given up five straight base hits in the top of the fifth. And now it's a 10-4 ball game. And here comes Colavito. Is there action in the Milwaukee bullpen? Buell is due to bat second in the inning. I just don't think you do it yet. Let me check his pull rating just to see here. One, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 13, 14. He's at his pull rating right now, but I'm going to keep him out there. He's still, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep him out there. He got a six run lead, but K line on at second. Buell will pitch to Colavito now. Now it's a 10 4 ball game. Infield is back. Still no one out. Buell sets up. Strategy rolls are still off. Buell. 6-4. That is a blank. Colavito. 1-1. One, one. Base hit to left field. It's a single. K-line base running. Base runner four. Single to left. Plus two is a six. There's not going to be a throw. K-line will score. It's 10-5. to five. The Tigers have cut the lead in half. Colavito on it first, and now the batter is cash. Strategy rolls are back on, and that is going to be it for Buell. They have seen enough. You can't get any men out. That is the sixth straight base hit for the Tigers, and they're going to yank out Buell. So timeout for a pitching change. And the Tigers will bring out, let's see, I think they'll bring out a lefty in this case. And coming on to pitch for the Tigers will be Bob Hendley. And let's see, Hendley uh, does not have a record. He's 5-7, and seven, no saves, a 3 9 0 ERA. But here comes Hendley as the Tigers have gotten themselves back into this game. Colavito on it first. I know we've had things like that happen, Brian B., but never in the world, never in a World Series game. Ten to five, still top of the fifth, and still nobody out. Infield double play. Strategy rolls are back on. That is a nine. Nothing happening. Hendley will pitch to Cash. Fans are at County Stadium suddenly getting a little nervous. Hendley will make the pitch. Five five. Error on a throw. Cash. One five. And that's not going to be it. That's going to be an infield single. That's an infield single to first. It's picked up by Adcock. His error rating is a six. That's a six. He still tries to get cash, and he throws the ball away. Colavito will wind up on third. Cash will go to second. And it is now the, the, the Braves are somehow imploding. That is a single and an E3. So what that is, that was an error on a throw. On an S3, that's an automatic infield single. 
And then you throw the check the roll to see if an error is still made. Adcock's error rating is a six. So he still tried to get to get the out at first by Bob Henley, but he threw the ball past him, and the runners advance an extra base. What an unbelievable comeback so far by the Tigers, and still no one out. And here comes Burroughs. Colavito won at third. Cash on at second. Boros is now the batter. Henley will pitch. Boros is 0 for 2. Fans here at County Stadium wondering what's going on. Infield is going to play. They're going to play in. And try, well, you know what? Now they're going to play in. They're going to play in. It's now a 10 to 5 ball game. Henley will go ahead and pick. Strategy roll, 13, nothing happening. Henley will set up and make the pitch. Henley, 5-4. Range play. Burrows, 3-5. It's a ground and a short. It's hit to McMillan. His range is a three. But an infield in, his range is a one. He can't get it. Base hit. That's a single pass short. Colavito will score. Cash does not have the speed. He'll have to hold a third. Boros goes to first. It's 10-6. to six. That is the That is the eighth straight hit. And I don't think I've ever had an inning with something like that. That may be a record for the most hits in an inning consecutively. And now the batter is Brown. Brown is 0 for 1. They're going to go to double play depth here. But now it's a 10 to 6 ball game. No lead is safe on inside pitch. Cash on at third. Boros on it first. Hendley, he will. Uh, they got to get an out here. I'm going to let Hendley pitch to Brown. Hendley will pitch to Brown. Still nobody out here in the bot in the top of the fifth. Strategy roll. That is a two. Cash not doing anything. Neither is Boros. Hendley will go ahead and pitch. Hendley, 6-2. That's a pitcher result. Righty, one's a single. Oh, he just missed it. The two was too high. Brown, 4-6. But Brown gets a base hit anyway. It's a single to center. Cash comes in to score. Boros, base runner two. Single to center. Minus two is a zero. He will not go to third. He holds. It is 10-7. Another base hit that is the ninth base hit in a row. And I've never had that before. And I'm automatically giving this game a game of the year candidate. Because that is a record for me. All nine players got a hit consecutively. And there was an error on the Braves. And now the top of the now Chico Fernandez gets the bat again. And now it's 10 to 7. Fernandez one for two. Infield double play depth still. And that's gonna be it for Hendley. And they're gonna bring in a right-hander to pitch to Fernandez as the as the Braves just can't get out of this inning. Coming on to pitch for the Braves is going to be Don Notabart. And Nottabart has, let's see here, he actually has, he has a record of no wins, a loss, and a save for the postseason. So Nottabart will come on and, and pitch with the bait with runners at first and second. The tying run is at the plate. Top of the fifth, 10 to 7. I have never had 10, I don't think I've ever had 10 runs scored in an inning. I know I got close. I just don't think I had 10. I don't remember if I did. I know I had eight one time. Boros with at second. Brown on at first. The fans here at County Stadium cannot believe their eyes. Not a bar with a pitch. Strategy roll. 
That is a 10. Nothing happening. Not a Bart. We'll make the pitch. 4-3. Walk. 5. And the bases are loaded. The Milwaukee Braves cannot get a single out. And the bases are loaded. And once again, Dick McAuliffe will come on to pinch it. Because he was the, he, he took over for the pitcher. This inning is not over yet, so McAuliffe can, pick, can bat again. And he got a base in his first time up. That walk does end a nine straight batting, uh, nine straight hits. But now 10 have reached base in a row. And now the infielder double play death. And they're still going to call for a double play. Nottabart will go ahead and pitch to McAuliffe. Now a 10-7 to ball game. Are you really kidding me? Strategy roll. Nothing on the six. Nottabart will pitch to McAuliffe. Nottabart. 3-4. That is a blank. McAuliffe. 2-4. It's a ground ball to first. Now, it is the the infield is a double play depth. Two, two, three. Shortstop, pivot. McMillan plus one is a four. They got the double play. Two outs. But Boros does come in to score. Brown goes to third. Fernandez and McCullough are out, but it's now 10-8. So that is a 3-6-3 three, three double play. Boros does come in to score. Brown goes to third, and now the batter is Wood. Now a 10-8 ball game. And Wood at the plate. He's one for three. Two outs. Infield now back. And the fans here cannot believe what the Tigers just did. Not a Bart will pitch to Wood. Strategy roll. That is an 18. No play. Not a Bart will set up. He will make the pitch. Not a Bart. 3 1. Walk 19. That is high. Wood. 5 2. Base hit the right field. That's a single. Wood goes to first. Brown scores. It's 10 to 9. Holy cow. Stadium. Groans. <sighs> and now the batter is Bruton as the Tigers have put nine runs here in the top of the fifth inning. Still two outs, and the batter is Bruton. He's three for three. He's got three singles. What did you miss? Uh. <laughs> Wood on it first. Nottabart will go ahead and pitch to Bruton. Fans here at County Stadium cannot believe it. That is a one. Wood actually gets the steal sign. 15 plus 2 is 17, minus 2 is 15. But I'm not going to run him out of the inning. I will not send him. Not a Bart will pitch to Bruton. Not a Bart with the deal. 5 4. Wild pitch. 16. No. Ball one. Not a Bart did not. Uh, not a Bart does not get a wild one. He'll do it again. Not a Bart. 4 6 against the lefty. That is a blank. Bruton, 4-6, base hit, pass short, that's a single. What a base runner, five, that'll be good enough. He'll go to third. What an incredible inning by the Tigers. Bruton is four for four, and now the batter is K-Line. K-Line, one for three with a double. The tying run is 90 feet away. Still two outs. 
And it doesn't matter which pitcher the, Bra the Braves seem to have on there. They're going to let Nadavar finish out the inning because he's due to bat second. Wood on it third. Bruton on it first. K-Line now ready to swing. Two outs, top of the fifth. What an incredible inning. This may be the greatest inning I've ever rolled. Wood on red set. Strategy roll. Nothing on the 12. Nadabart will set up and pitch. Nadabart, 5-1. That is a blank. K-Line, 2-3. Base hit right past the pitcher. It's a single. This game is tied. K-Line hits it right past the pitcher. Bruton, base runner, 5 with 2 outs. He'll make third. K-Line goes to first. It's a 10-run inning for the Tigers. Stadium barfs. You have got to be kidding me. There is no way the dice can roll like that. And now it's a tie ball game for Colavito. And I got no choice. Nadabart's got to come out. Nadabart coming out of the game. And let's see. They're going to bring in a different pitcher here. They just need a pitcher to get an out. And... Ugh. Coming on to pitch for the Braves is going to be Tony Cloninger. Seven wins, two losses, no saves, a 5-2-5 ERA. He's just there to try to get it out. What an unbelievable inning. Bruton on at third. K-Line on at first. The go-ahead run is at third base. And now Cloninger brought in here for the Braves. Two out still. And that is a base hit. And that moves him over there. He's over here. And now Colavito. Colavito, one for three. Bruton on at third. Strategy roll. Nothing on 11. Cloninger will set up against Colavito. Fans here at County Stadium are now suddenly running to the ticket windows to uh, maybe hold on a second here. We may have to go to Detroit. Cloninger will make the pitch. 2-4. That is a blank. Colavito. 3-1. And it's a fly ball to left field. Getting under there is Thomas. He sets up there. Makes the catch. Inning over. Stadium groans. <sighs> Ten runs on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hits. One error, a walk, and one error and a walk, and we're going to the bottom of the fifth inning with the game tied at ten. Incredible. Roy McMillan leads off for the Braves. The Braves peep the Braves lineup. The Braves lineup is tired. They were out in that field for probably a good 45 minutes to an hour, probably. Tigers do need a pitcher. And they're suddenly back in this game. And coming on to pitch for the Tigers is going to be Hank Aguirre. Four wins, four losses, eight saves, a 3 2 7 ERA. Aguirre will come on to pitch. As believe it or not, the loss that Foytak was going to get and the win that Buell was going to get is now gone. So Hank Aguirre will pitch to McMillan in the bottom of the fifth inning. Tied at 10. Aguirre, 2-5, wild pitch, ball one. Aguirre again, 2-3, strikeout 15, that is high. McMillan, 
Four, four. That's a power hit to right. That's a 15. But against the lefty, it's just going to miss. That's going to be a fly out to right field. A 15 just misses a triple, and McMillan is out, one down. New batter coming up for the Braves. As Cloninger did his job, coming on to pinch hit will be Gino Simoli, 234 average, three homers, 10 RBIs. Jeff Gotts joins us here at County Stadium. Uh, Gary will pitch to Simoli. We are tied at 10, bottom of the fifth inning. Aguirre, 3-5, possible error. Simoli, 2-3. That's a fly ball to center field. It's hit to Bruton. His error rating is a 3. you got to be kidding me. That's a 1. He drops the ball. Bill Bruton got out there and he drops it. Simoli rounding first. And he will take second on the drop throw. What an error by Bruton. And that is an E8. Bruton drops the fly ball out there. First error on the Tigers. His error rating is a three, and that is a one. And he drops the ball out there, and Simoli is on second base. And the batter is May. So an E8, that's the first error on the Tigers. May is 0 for 2 with a walk. As we are now probably the craziest game I've rolled since that Cardinals Expos game in the 1994, in the, I'm sorry, the 1985 Division Series in Payoff Pitch. Samoli on at second base. Aguirre will pitch to May. Strategy roll, 10, no play. Aguirre sets up with the pitch. 5-3 against the lefty. Home run result. May needs a 7. That is a 6. That is gone. Kaboom! That ball is high, deep, gone. Braves retake the lead. Stadium cheers. Yay! A two-run bomb by Lee May as Aguirre pitches May a meatball, and he turns that into lasagna. It's 12 to 10. So the Braves retake the lead now, 12 to 10. The batter now is bowling as Aguirre will continue to pitch to him. Bowling is one for three with a single. A wild scored twice. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. So you score ten runs in the top of the fifth, and you give two of them back in the bottom of the inning. Ugh, that's a little demoralizing. Aguirre with the pitch. 5-4, range play. Bowling, 3-5. That's a single pass second, but it's a range play for Wood. His range is a 3. That is a 6. It'll be a base hit. Bowling gets a single. And keeps the inning alive. And now the batter is Matthews. As Rawlings is just getting, get, can't believe what's happening here. Matthews is 2 for 2, a double and a single and a walk. And Aguirre is not going to pitch to him. Aguirre coming out of the game for the Tigers, and they're going to bring in a righty, and they're going to go with Jerry Staley. Staley will come on to pitch. He has a record. He has a save in the postseason. So Staley will pitch. Staley was with the Kansas City Athletics most of 1961, wound up on the Tigers later. Bowling on at first, Staley will pitch to Matthews. Infield is at double play. Strategy roll. That is an 11. Nothing happening. Staley will set up with the pitch. Staley, 5-3, strikeout two, steer right out. He gets Matthews, and that is a big K. Two outs. And now the batter is the hammer. 
Henry, is, oh, Henry is one for three. He's got a double. And now two outs. Staley will pitch to Aaron. 12 to 10 ball game here. Definitely the craziest game of the postseason. Bowling on at first. Strategy roll. That is a 14. Nothing happening. Staley will go ahead and pitch to Aaron. Staley. 3-6 against the righty. That is a blank. Aaron. 2-6. It's a fly ball to center. Bruton will get to that one. He will put it away. Side retired. Two runs on two hits and one error. A two-run bomb by Lee May. That's his first home run of the postseason, by the way. What an unbelievable inning. 12 runs on 14 hits and two errors combined in the inning. 12-10 Braves. We go to the top of the sixth. Braves leading 12 to 10. And right now, one of the more unbelievable games I've ever rolled. Never had a 10 run inning before. Braves need a pitcher. And they're going to go ahead and bring out Ron Piche. Two wins, two losses, to save, a 3 5 2 ERA. Piche is 0 1 for the postseason. Cannot use any starters until all relievers have been used. And there is no fatigue effect. Everybody is still available for tomorrow. Here's leading off will be Norm Cash. Cash is two for two, a double and a single. And an error got him an extra base. 12-10 Braves. Piche, 3-5. Strikeout 12. That is high. Cash. 6-5. It's a fly ball to center. Aaron will get to that one. And that is the first out. One down for Boros. Boros is one for three with a single. Piche sets up with the pitch. 6-2. That's at the park. County Stadium. 3-4. Single plus. It's a, a possible double. Boros runs around second. He's got to try for, he's got, runs around first. Got to try for second. Base runner two. Center fielder Aaron minus one. He gets the second on a one. It is a three. He'll put on the brakes and stay at first, as really he should. Second hit of the game for Boros. And the, bat, and the batter is Brown. Yes, already a game of the year candidate so far. And the game is not even over. Brown is one for two with a single infield double play. Boros on it first. Strategy rolls are active. That's an 18. Uh, Brown is not going to bunt. He will swing. Piche will go ahead against Brown. Piche, 2-4. Strikeout five. He got him. He goes ahead and strikes out Brown for out number two. And now Fernandez is up next. Fernandez is one for two, a single and a walk. Boros still on it first. He'll stay there. Piche will now pitch to Fernandez. Two outs now, top of the sixth. Piche will go ahead and deal. Piche, three, two, strikeout, 13 is high. Fernandez, six, four, fly ball, center field. Aaron will get to it. And he sets up. And he makes the catch. No runs and a hit. How do you go from 10 runs on 12 hits in one inning to no runs and a hit the next? Another reason why I love inside pitch. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning. Braves lead 12 to 10. Staley will continue to pitch, and he can pitch to three more batters before Tyre. He is due to lead off. They're going to let him pitch. Here comes Joe Adcock, and he is having a good night, two for two, a home run and a double. Adcock belted his fourth home run of the postseason. Braves lead 12-10. Staley with the pitch. 
Staley, 1-4 against the righty. That is a blank. Adcock, 2-3. Fly to right. And K-Line will get to this one. One down. Next batter is Thomas. Thomas is 0-3. And him and McMillan are the only two players that have not joined the hit parade for the Braves. Staley will set up with the deal. Staley, 5-4, strikeout, 9. Yes, he got him. Steer, right out. Two down. He goes ahead and gets Thomas, just barely. That was a, that was a big strikeout. Torrey is next. Torrey, 2-3, for three, a single and a triple. Scored on a wild pitch. Staley looking in on Torrey. Fans here at County Stadium not totally relaxing. They just saw the Tigers put 10 on the board in one inning. Staley, 3-2, range play. Torrey, 3-6 at the fly to left field. That ball is hit to Colavito. His range is a four. That is a one. He makes it with his eyes closed. Side retire. That is the first time in a ball game the Braves have been sent down in order. They've gotten runs and hits in every single inning except for this one. Six in the books, 12 to 10. Are you kidding me right? Are you serious right now? We go to the top of the seventh. Braves holding on to a 12-10 lead. Pinch hitter coming in for Jerry Staley. Piche is going to stay on the mound. He can pitch to two more batters before he tires. And let's see. Coming on to pit, coming on to bat for the Tigers will be Reno Bertoya. 226 average, two homers, 25 RBIs. Bertoya was also with the Kansas City Athletics in 61. Wound up on the Tigers later. Piche is will pitch to Bertoya. Top of the seven. Piche, 4-1. That's at the park. County Stadium, 6-4. It's a power hit to right. That is a 14. And that is a home run possibility. But against the righty, Bertoya needs a two. It is a four. He doesn't get it. And that's just going to be a fly ball hit to right field. And getting there at the wall will be May, and that is out number one. But Bertoya just missed it. Fly out to right field, just barely misses a homer. And that is the first out. Next batter is Wood. And Wood is two for four. He's got two singles. Piche will go ahead and make the pitch. Piche, 1-4, strikeout, 17, that is high. Wood, 6-4, ground ball to short, handled by McMillan. And he will take care of it, two outs. Two down now for Bruton. Piche is now tired, but they'll let him pitch. Bruton is having an awesome night tonight. He came into this game batting 164. He is 4-4 four for four tonight, four singles. You're fascinated by the Braves logo. Yes, that is a great, that is a uh, awesome logo back in the day. Back in the day when being politically correct, well, there was no such thing. Piche will go ahead and pitch to Bruton. Piche, 5-6, wild pitch, ball one. Piche will go ahead and try again. Piche, 4-4, four, four, strike out one, swing and a miss, struck him out. And the side is retired. Nice job by Piche. One, two, three, go the Tigers. Can you, this is definitely playoff baseball. We are at the seventh inning stretch. Sing, take me out to the ball game. I'll be right back.
Tomorrow night will be game five of this exciting 1961 World Series. I don't know if that game's going to eclipse this one, but we'll find out. Tomorrow night, will the Braves be trying to clinch the championship, or will it be a two-games-to-two tie? For the Detroit Tigers, it will be Don Mossy going for them, and Warren Spahn pitches for the Braves. You kind of think the Tigers really need to win this game and not have Spawn try to pitch a clincher. Tomorrow is tomorrow night. It is game five of this World Series. Don't forget for you guys to vote for the next season on it of Inside Pitch on the network. 1958, 1988, 2010, and 2016 are your choices. Make sure you put the votes into the comment section of the selection show video, not these other ones. They got to go in the selection show video. I did catch a couple that were put into some other into other videos, and I caught them and marked them. But please make sure they must go into the selection show video if your choice is for the next season. That, of course, season will be revealed on the Review and Reveal show when this World Series is over. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. 12-10 Braves. Roy McMillan leads off for the Braves, and he is 0 for 2 with a walk. Tigers need a pitcher. I'm beginning to run out of relievers, but let's see. Seventh inning. I'm going to go with Howie. Coming on to pitch for the Tigers is going to be Howie Coplitz. Two wins, no losses, no saves. A 227 ERA. Howie Coplitz actually does have, he is one and one in the postseason. McMillan will lead off against Coplitz here to start the bottom of the seventh. Coplitz with the pitch. 4-5, that's at the park. County Stadium, 4-1. It's a fly ball to straightaway center. Bruton will get to it and make the play. One down, we'll see a new pitcher for a new batter for Piche as he will come up to be, as he will come out as the Braves need a batter. And let's see what's gonna be. And coming on to pinch hit for the Braves will be Al Spangler, 268 average, no homer, six RBIs. Spangler will pit, will bat. The pitcher spot is one for three for the Braves. Bottom of the seventh, one out. Coplets will make the pitch. One, two, strikeout 14 is high. Spangler, 6 1, base hit right past second. It's a single. Spangler gets a base hit and he'll go to first as the Braves trying to get some insurance. And now the batter is May. May is one for three, but he had a big time two run homer his last time up. And that was his first of the postseason. Infield is at double play. Spangler on it first. Strategy still active. Nothing with the 15. Coplets will pitch to May. Coplets. 6-6. Six, six. Pitcher result. Lefty. 1-13. to 13. That's a 3. Base hit right back up the middle. Spangler, base runner 4. He will head to third. May goes to first. And now the Braves are looking for some insurance. And now the batter is bowling. And bowling is two for four with two singles. Tigers got to call the infield in. As it looks like Milwaukee trying to put some more runs on the board. Bowling two for four. 12-10 lead. Coplets will pitch to bowling. Strategy, nothing on the nine. Spangler on it third. May on it first. There is one out. And actually, you know what? They're going to switch to double play depth instead. Because cop, because Bowling's a three, and Coplets is a plus two. Coplets will make the pitch. 6-1. Strikeout 11. That is high. Bowling. 1-1. One, one. It's a ground ball to second base. 3-5. And, of course, the, you can only go as high as five. 
Wood is a zero pivot. A one to five is a double play. The only thing the Tigers cannot allow is a six. It is a two, and they get the double play and retire the side. Four, six, three, double play. No runs, two hits for the Braves as the Tigers get out of it. And still 12 to 10 after seven. As going double play was the right call. We go to the top of the eighth. Leading off of the Tigers will be Mr. Tiger, Al Kaline. He is two for four, a single and a double. Braves need a pitcher. And let's see if they're going to bring out here in the eighth inning. And they're going to see if he can get it done. Coming on to pitch for the Braves, the closer, Don McMahon. Six wins, four losses, eight saves, a 2.84 ERA. McMahon has three saves and is 1 0 for the postseason. And let's see. So here comes K-Line against McMahon. The Braves will be looking to him to see if he can get six outs. Top of the eighth inning. McMahon with the pitch. 2-1. Walk. 17. That is high. K-Line. 5-3. Line drive to third. Right to Matthews. One out. One down. And here comes Colavito. He is one for four. McMahon will go ahead and make the pitch. McMahon, six four, possible error. Colavito, four one, line drive to third once again to make the Matthews, but he does. But there are no errors on lineouts unless there's somebody on base. Two outs. No error there. And now here comes Cash. Cash having a good night tonight. He is two for three, a single and a double, and got an extra base on an error. Two outs here, but right now McMahon doing his job. McMahon with the pitch. Six, four, a possible error. Cash, two, five, and that is not going to be an error. That is a hit ball to short. It's picked up by McMillan. Cash, not very fast. Cash base runner is a two, a one to two. He is safe at first. He's out of there. Side retire. Nice play by McMillan as he gets Cash by a couple of steps at first base. And it's a one, two, three inning for McMahon. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Leading off for the Braves will be Eddie Matthews. Matthews is two for three, a single and a double. And is Coplets going to pitch to him? Yes, Coplets. Well, will he? Maybe. Maybe I may bring in Fox here. Yeah, we're going to bring in Fox. Coplets is going to come out of the game, and coming on for the Tigers is going to be Terry Fox. He's got to keep this a two-run game and hope for some ninth-inning magic. Fox will go ahead and pitch to Matthews. Top of the ninth inning. Strategy rolls are off now. Fox sets up with the pitch. Fox, 5-3. Home run result. Righty, 13-6. And I guess that didn't work pretty well. Kaboom. That ball is hit pretty high. That ball is hit pretty deep. And that ball is hit pretty gone. Home run, Eddie Matthews. Stadium cheers. Yay. Eddie Matthews hits his second, it's his third home run of the postseason. And that is a big one. And it is now 13 to 10 as the Braves get that field goal and get a field goal. Terry Fox went ahead 
and pitched him a meatball. And Matthews put the tomato sauce, the ricotta cheese, and the crushed red pepper and turned that into lasagna. 13 to 10 Braves. And now the batter is the hammer. And he is one for he is one for three. That is a big insurance run. Fox will pitch to Aaron. Now 13 to 10. Fox. 6-1. Home run chance. Righty. 1-12. to The four is good against the righty. Aaron needs a 17. And he got it. Kaboom! That ball is high. That ball is deep. Yes, people. That ball is gone. Home run hammering Hank Aaron. Stadium cheers. Yay! Aaron hits his second home run of the postseason. It's now 14 to 10 as the Braves now get the extra point. Fourteen to ten. And the batter now is Adcock. As Fox right now just putting just serving up meatballs and basketballs and grapefruits. He's going to stay out there, though. He's their best pitcher they got, although he already reached the pull rating. Uh, you're just on pitch. Fox will go up against Adcock here. Nobody out. Bottom of the eighth inning. Fox with the pitch. 3-5. That is a blank. He is not tired. Adcock, 4-2. It's a fly to right. And it will be K-Line getting to that, and that is out number one. One down. Here comes Thomas. Thomas is 0 for 4. He's the only one of the only guy. He is. He and McMillan, the only ones have not joined the hit parade. Yep, Packers 14, Lions 10. One out. Fox with the pitch. 4-2. A possible error. Thomas. 1-4. Line drive hit to second. Wood gets it, and that's out number two. So Thomas goes 0 for 5. And now Tory is up. And Tory 2 for 4, a single and a triple. Fox will pitch to him here. But now it's a 14 to 10 game. Fox will set up with the pitch. Fox. 2-4, strikeout 6, and yep, swing and a miss, strikeout, and the inning is over. Two runs on two solo bombs, one by Matthews and one by Aaron, and it is 14-10 after 8. But will we see some ninth inning magic? In a game like this, if we don't have any ninth inning magic, I will actually be disappointed. Top of the ninth, Steve Boros leads off for the Cats, and he is two for four. The Tigers put 10 runs on 12 hits in the fifth inning. The rest of the game, no runs on four hits in for the rest of the game. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. So we go to the top of the ninth. Fourteen to ten in favor of the Braves. McMahon will pitch to Boros. Fans here at County Stadium hoping they don't have to buy tickets for a trip back to Detroit. McMahon will set up with the pitch. McMahon, 1-3. That is at the park. County Stadium, 3-5. Ground ball, second base. That's it to bowling. He's got it. Throws the first one away. One down, and that will bring up Brown. Brown is one for three with a walk. He has a single. McMahon trying to get a six-out save. McMahon will set up with the pitch. 
McMahon, three, five, strikeout, one, swing and a miss, steer, right out, two down. And now the last chance for the Tigers is Chico Fernandez. And he is one for three with a double. Fans here at County Stadium are on their feet. McMahon trying to complete a six-out save. Win tonight. Braves try to clinch tomorrow night with Spawny on the mound. Fans are coming up here. McMahon will set up, and here comes the pitch. 2-2. Two, two. Strikeout nine. That is high. Fernandez swings the bat. 3-5. It's a power hit to right field. That is an 8 against the righty. Fernandez keeps it alive. That's going to be a double. A double for Fernandez as he has contributed in this game. He's now 2 for 4 with two doubles. So Fernandez now on at second base. We'll see a pinch hitter for Fox. As the Tigers have to go to the bench. And coming on to bat will be Bubba Morton. 287 average, two homers, 19 RBIs. Bubba Morton will try to keep the game going. 14 to 10 with two outs. McMahon can pitch to two more batters before he tires. McMahon will set up here. Fans at County Stadium hoping for a good pitch. McMahon winds up. Strategy rolls her crosser off. Here's the pitch. McMahon, 2-1, walk, 14. That is high. Morton, 2-5. It's a power hit to right. That's an 8 against the righty. It's a base hit for Bubba Morton. Single to right. Fernandez, a base runner, 3. Single, single to right, plus 1. A three with two outs of four plus one. A one to five, he'll score. He does. Fernandez comes around to score. Morton on it first. It's 14 11. Bubba Morton comes through with a big RBI single. And a run scores. And now the top of the order with Wood. Well, I, got, I wanted some ninth inning magic, and that's exactly what I got. So Morton on it first. Now it's 14-11. McMahon will pitch to Wood. Wood's having a decent night. Two for five. He's got two singles. Still two outs in the top of the ninth. Fans here at County Stadium hoping McMahon can get it done. Strategy roll still off. Here comes the pitch. McMahon, 2-2, two, two, strikeout 15. That is high. Wood will swing. 6-4, and it's a ground ball to short. McMillan picks it up, pumps once, pumps twice, throws to second. That's your game. The Milwaukee Braves escape the Detroit Tigers tonight. With a 14 to 1 win, and they take a 3 1 series lead. Stadium cheers. Yay! One run on two hits for the Tigers, but what an unbelievable ball game! But the Tigers are going to come up a little short. It's a 14-11 win for the Braves. And the Braves have a three games to one lead. And they got Warren Spawn tomorrow night to try to clinch the title. Game of the year candidate, absolutely. With 10 runs on 12 hits in the fifth inning. That's the first time I ever had 10 runs in an inning. And you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You had nine straight base hits in a walk. Unbelievable. Final line score coming up.
for the Braves, 14 runs on 15 hits and one error. For the Tigers, 11 runs on 18 hits and one error. The winning pitcher is Tony Cloninger for the Braves. He gets the win. At least I think he does. Let me see here. Yeah, Tony Cloninger gets the win, and he goes to 1-0 and for the postseason. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not Cloninger. My bad, not Cloninger. It's not a Bart. It's not a Bart. That's right. Not a Bart gets the win. My bad. Not a Bart actually goes to one and one. The loss goes to Aguirre, and he drops to zero and two for the postseason. And Don McMahon picks up his fourth save of the playoffs. Definitely a game of the year candidate. Absolutely unbelievable game. A ten to nothing lead. Detroit scores ten runs in the fifth. But they score one run on six hits the rest of the way throughout the rest of the game. What a victory for the Braves. <laughs> what a victory for the Braves tonight as they pull it out of their ass. And I can't believe the way this game went, but that's inside pitch for you. You really never know. Tomorrow night will be game five of the 1961 World Series. The Detroit Tigers versus the Milwaukee Braves. The Tigers now facing elimination. Don Mossy will be pitching for the Tigers. Warren Spahn pitches for the Braves. Can the Braves win it all tomorrow night? Or will the Tigers send it back for a game, in, for a game six in Detroit on Friday? Who knows what will happen? Will it be a championship tomorrow night? Or will the Tigers spoil the party? You will have to wait 24 hours to find out. Jeff Gotts, Dwayne Martz, Chuck Rawlings, D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer, Brian B. And let's see here, Ryan Sullivan, Steeler fan, Richard R., DVIP, and Jack Dawson. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Please leave a like on your way out to the turnstiles. I'm pretty sure this game deserved it. Subscribe if you've not done so, and make sure you hit the dang bell. And don't forget to vote, of course, for the next season in Inside, in for, for your next Inside Pitch season in the comments of the Selection Show video. And, of course, David Vega, who just joined us real quick. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart, stay strong, and we'll see you guys tomorrow night. The Milwaukee Braves hold off the Tigers. They had a 10-0 lead, and the Tigers came right back, but the Braves win it 14-10. Braves lead the World Series three games to one. Will they eliminate tomorrow night? We'll find out tomorrow night. Take care.